All right, hey guys, Mr. Kyle Myers Mathematics, and let's just jump right into it. This is a worksheet on continuous relations. And that might sound a little weird, but continuous just means that it keeps going, right? So it keeps going, keeps going. And there's no like gaps or anything like that going on. And that's basically all that means, and we don't need to get too much into the specifics of that to understand what that is. But it just means it keeps going. And then a relation is sort of like a function, but it doesn't have to be an actual function. So a relation is literally just anything you can graph, right? Anything that can be graphed. So I'm just going to put graph here. So it's... Continuous relations are just anything that you can graph that goes all the way across, right? It's it's got no gaps in it. You can graph it, and it, it there's yeah. So that that's really all that that is. So when they say continuous relations, it's not like something really special. It's just that we're graphing things that go all the way across the x-axis, and and that's it. So we want to determine if the relation is a function. Okay, well, a function is different from a relation. A function is a type of relation, but all, not all relations are functions, right? So, so if, you, if you made a hierarchy out of this, you would say, okay, a relation, that would be like anything you can graph, right? So it can be graphed. And out of relations, you basically have things that are functions and things that are not functions, right? It's, it's either, it either is or it isn't, right? So it's either a function or it's not a function. So it's either fun or not fun. <laughs> and that's all based on this little thing called the vertical line test when you're looking at a graph. Technically it always works because you could always graph it and then you know test it out that way, but it's helpful to think of it a little differently maybe when you are not looking at a graph. But when we're looking at a graph and you want to figure out if it's a function, you do the vertical line test. It's going to be a function if I can draw a vertical line anywhere I want on that graph, and it only ever goes through the graph once. Okay? So it either, it either doesn't pass through the graph at all, or it passes through exactly once. So if it's a function, it's because it only passes through at any x value, there's only one y value. So for every x, so basically for every x, for every x, there is only one y. AKA the vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line, it can hit zero or one times, and that's it. If it hits more than one time anywhere, even once, then it's not a function. So, number one, function. Because I can draw vertical lines anywhere I want, and it only ever goes through the graph once. Same thing with number two. I can draw a vertical line anywhere I want, and it only goes through the graph once. This is a function. Moving on. So, can I draw a vertical line right there? I can, and it hits the graph twice, right? So, for this x value, which I just kind of drew a random vertical line, but this x value might be, I don't know, like a, like a half or something. So, at the x value of one half, there's two different y values. But remember what we said a function was. The more technical way to think about it is that for every x meaning for every x value, there's only one y value. There's only one place on the graph that you go to when you go left or right. You go left or right, and then you go up or down. Okay, so this is not fun. <laughs> this is not a function. I think I'm having fun naming these. So here, I can draw a vertical line here. And you might be thinking, oh, well, you can draw a vertical line right there, and then it passes, right? But the way the vertical line test works is that 
if you can draw a vertical line somewhere, even one vertical line, and it passes through the graph two or more times, then it's not a function, even if you can only do it once. If you can draw a vertical line that only passes through the graph once, that doesn't really mean anything. You're only trying to break the system, right? It's, it's like you're trying to break it, not trying to, to like, n like play nice with it, right? You're not trying to play nice. You're trying to break it. <laughs> That's the goal. You want to try to break it. If you can't break it, then it works pretty well. All right, this is like a, like a stress test. All right, so this one's not a function because I can draw a vertical line that goes through more than once. Okay. Then you have this, and this thing's really funky looking. It looks like I can draw a vertical line, except right there. That vertical line goes through the graph at a bunch of different places, right? Even if I just look at regular numbers, like integer kind of numbers, it goes through like seven different places there. Remember, it only takes one vertical line to break the system. So this is not a function, right? What about this one? Well, on this one, it's not continuous, but it is continuous. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have a a full domain, I would say. So in my mind, it's not like, you know, I don't know if I would really consider that like truly, truly continuous. It's like continuous by. Uh, the way textbooks normally define it, I guess. But anyways, I digress. You can draw a vertical line anywhere you want on here as well. And you might be thinking, oh, well, what are those little circle things on the ends? Those are open circles. They don't really mean anything other than if I draw a vertical line right here, it doesn't go through the graph at all, technically. It's the, the circles are not actually like graph circles, like little miniature graph circles. So it's not like that, right? Otherwise, it would be hitting twice. But no, that, that little tiny open circle there, that actually represents that the graph does not exist at negative 6. Like it starts right after negative 6, so it could be like negative 5.9999999999, and that would be on the graph. Right, just a little bit to the right of negative 6 would be negative 5.9999. Or how about on this side with 6, right, positive 5.9999999. <laughs> Just shy of 6. That's on the graph, but 6 is not on the graph. But that doesn't really mean anything, because remember, you're trying to get a vertical line to pass through more than one time. If it doesn't pass through the graph at all, like it doesn't pass through the graph at all at negative 6, and if it does pass through the graph but only once, both of those are fine. Since I can't draw a vertical line that passes through two or more times, this is a function. All right, so now we're dealing with a relation. We want to determine if it's a function, so we want to do that again. We want to you know, do the same thing over again, determine if it's a function. Then find the domain and range. So actually, there's, there's three things, and actually, let, let me erase this. So there's three things they want. They want the function, whether it's a function or not, and the domain and the range. Okay, so now they really ramped it up. We want to figure out if it's a function first, this is not a function because I can draw a vertical line right there and it goes through the graph in a bunch of different places. So this is not a function. Okay. And what about the domain and the range? Okay, so domain, right? So it's like your domain. Like what what do you own, right? Your domain, like what your land, your room, it's your domain. When you think about the the dimensions of your room, you typically only think about like how long is the room and how wide is the room. You don't normally think about how tall the ceiling is unless you have a short ceiling and you're always ducking, which um, is like not most people. So typically when you think about your room or your house or your yard or whatever, you're thinking about that that's your domain, right? So that's that's like left and right. Forwards and back, like left and right, forwards and backwards kind of thing. That's not really up and down. Not why. That's your left and right. That's your 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 space that you occupy, right? So that's your that's your space. Your 
space which which is left and right right so so left and right left and right and those are x values okay and then the way i like to think about range is it sort of like your height is a range right how tall are you that's a range or what's your ceiling range right to use the 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 room example again right what's the range of your room well that would be how tall the ceiling is or your range like how far can you throw a football that's kind of like distance outwards but it also has to do with like throwing the ball up in the air right so even when you're talking about like sports examples your range is is sort of a, a measure of how far right how far out it can go and on a graph since there's no like forwards and backwards on a graph there's only left and right and then there's up and down there's no forwards and backwards right so so when we think about range in real life we're thinking like how far out how far forward but there's no forward on a graph there's only up and down so range is the other one it's the up and down okay so anyways this is not a function domain okay domain would be basically every every x value could be a possible value of a domain but on this particular graph only the x value of 2 sorry negative 2 actually happens right so so only the x value of 2 you could say it like this you could say x with a bar and then x equals negative 2 so you could say it like that this would be what's called set builder notation or set notation the other way you could say it uh, would be so I'll put or the other way you could say this would be uh, in interval notation you would say uh, curly brace bracket again and then negative two like that right so that's that's set notation versus interval notation and it just depends on how your teacher likes to you know have you write out the answers so either set notation or interval notation I'll do a little bit of both um, I, I think there's pros and cons. I think sometimes one is better than the other and vice versa, depending on the scenario. So it kind of just depends. With range, we would say y such that y, okay, well, let's let's uh, erase the line that I drew here so I don't get myself messed up because it's not going to go forever and ever up and down. It's only going to go, and we always start from uh, from the lowest and go to the highest. So we start from the lowest. The lowest is negative 6, and then we go to the highest, and then we go to the highest, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and put a curly brace bracket on that. <coughs> Not a super good curly brace bracket, but notice I only put less than signs. So you, if y is between, if your range goes from something to something, you write it like this with the lowest number less than sign a y and then another less than sign and then the highest number then you have to decide if you need to include that number so negative six that's an open circle not an actual circle circle that's being graphed right so if it's an open circle then you are not including it if you're not including it you don't put an equals if you are including it then you do put an equals right in interval notation we would put a parentheses right so or we would put a parentheses and put negative six because parentheses and in interval notation means you don't include comma four bracket means you do include now earlier I did a curly brace for interval notation but that's because if you're only stating one value in interval notation you have to use a different symbol if you're using a range of values an interval of values how interval notation is supposed to work then you use for either a bracket or a parentheses if it's if it's an interval an actual interval of, of numbers okay that was a lot so bear with me we'll do it again on number eight here so let me uh, let me make a little divider so on number eight okay well I can draw a vertical line right here so that's not a function right so not a function not a function in the future, I think what I'll do is, is I'll write it like this, because it's, it's 
less work to write that. So a squiggly means the opposite of sometimes. It depends on the context. Uh, but it does a lot of times in mathematics. So if I put a squiggly, it means like not fun, right? Like or anti-fun, right? Uh, so that's it's not a function because I can draw a vertical line. Domain, right? So domain in uh, well the arrows are actually pointing down and to the left, and this arrow is kind of pointing like up and to the left. So it will continue to point more and more to the it'll still continue to travel to the left like forever and ever and ever so that means the furthest to the left it would go would be negative infinity actually all the way to the furthest to the right it goes which would be two okay or if i did a uh, set builder notation then i would say x and then I would say x, um, si since I'm not between two numbers, I would just say x is uh, less than or equal to 2. Because x can be equal to 2, that is a point, it's not an open circle, and it can be anything less than 2. And that's how I would write it like that in uh, set builder notation. Okay, then for range, we would say, well, it, there's a down arrow and an up arrow, and there's nothing in between, there's no gaps or open circles or anything. So since that happens, and we can go all the way down and all the way up, then it would just be negative infinity to infinity. In set builder, you could just say, um, like, like this, you could say y such that, because that little bar means such that. You could, uh, you, you could write it like this, I guess, which is a really fancy way. You might be able to just say, um, like, like y, and then just put another y here. It just depends on, on how your teacher, I would, I would probably ask your teacher about this. Th this would be the, the fanciest way to do it. The most, um, I guess, mathematically accurate. But I would, I would maybe see what your teacher wants you to do on that, because a lot of different teachers do different shorthands for when you want to say all reals using set notation, so I'd maybe ask your teacher about that one. There's a couple different ways to do that one. Okay, moving on. And we'll start to speed up a little bit as we go. This is a function. I can put a vertical line anywhere I want. So that is a function. Okay, so we'll divide it right here. So that is a function. Domain, so the arrows, let's look at where the arrows are going. The arrows are going to forever go out to the left and to the right. So the domain is all reals again. And for domain, sometimes you can just write it out like this, all real numbers. right? Or you can put negative infinity to infinity, or how I just did the, the range earlier. For range, though, range is not all reals. You start at what looks like negative 2 for a y value. right? So negative 2 to infinity. Or in set notation you would say y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Feels like that. All right, number 10. So this one has a dot on one side and an arrow on the other. And if you haven't noticed yet, I like to draw my arrows in the directions that they're pointing. If the arrow is pointing out and it's not pointing straight up or straight out, then it is pointing in both directions. So it's going to continue going in both directions. There's no reason to think it'll ever stop. That's the kind of mentality you want to have with those arrows, is that it'll forever go up and it'll forever go to the left. It might be slowing down in how much it's going to the left, but it never stops going left. So be careful with that. Okay, this is a function. So this is a function. The domain is not all reals because this is a point. So the domain would only be from negative infinity to 6, including 6, never including infinities. Or in set notation, we would say uh, x bar, and then x would be less than, because you go left from 6, like that. Right? And then the range, range is also not all reals. We start from the bottom, which looks like negative 4. 
and it's going to continue to go up to the top, which would be up to infinity. It looks like my computer wants to be charged, so give me just a second. It's screaming at me. It's like, hey, we're going to die. Plug me in, stupid. It's not going to do that. Here you go, buddy. Get you some juice. All right. So the range goes from negative 4 to infinity. It doesn't go that way if you go this way. Like if you like if you travel from the bottom and you go this way, then it would stop at like negative three. But it's it's just wherever the graph might be, right? So if you go left, you can keep going forever and ever in the up direction. So that's why you would keep going uh, from negative four all the way to infinity. Or in set notation, it's y, and then it would be greater than or equal to negative four. Whew, okay. I think we're almost done, because I think those are the answers. Aha! Yes, they are. So we have two more. If this has been helpful, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to see more videos, that sort of thing. I have a ton of other resources on my website, MyersMathematics.com. Like, if you go there, MyersMathematics.com, on the front I have a little PDF guide that I call the five math mistakes everyone makes and how to avoid them. You can go check that out. It's a little guide I made in order to uh, just, you know, kind of get you on the right track with, uh, you know, how to just not make math mistakes, how to get the right answer in general. It's very general. It applies to, like, any math subject, basically. So um, you can go check that out. I've also got all of these uh, worked out worksheets will be on there, if they aren't already, by the, by the time you're watching this. And, uh, you know, just a, a bunch of other things on there, with courses, just, just a ton of stuff. I just want to put everything on there resources for both students and tutors as well so um, if you're looking at uh, you know tutoring you can also do that as well anyways number 11 not a function right so it's not a function domain you could say it goes from negative 4 to 4 negative 4 to 4 brackets on both and the other way to write it would be x and then negative 4 to 4. It's much harder to write in uh, set notation, I think. It takes more work to write uh, a specific finite interval. It's harder to do that in set notation than it is in interval notation. So I think that's where interval notation wins is with a specific finite interval between two numbers, but with a lot of other stuff, set notation is really kind of like the easier way to do it. For range, we want to go from negative 5 to 1. Brackets on that as well, negative 5 to 1. So we would say y, and then we go negative 5, 1. And that's it for that one. Okay. Number 12, can I draw a vertical line somewhere? No, 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 no. I mean, I get close. In between 1 and 2, it's really steep, but it's never completely vertical. So we're good here. This is a function. I'm going to get rid of my extra lines here so I can tell where's where's where. And there's no arrows, so nothing's going to infinity or coming from negative infinity domain would then be from the furthest to the left, which is negative 6, and then furthest to the right, which is positive 4. Both of those are closed circles, so I want to include those numbers, right? So then for set notation, I would do x, and then I would do negative 6, and 4, just like that. For range, I start from the bottom which is negative 7, and I go to the top, which is all the way up at 6. So you're just trying to look for the lowest it goes and the highest it goes, right? How low can you go? And then how high can you jump? So negative 7 to 6, or I would say y, such that negative 7 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 6. Ooh, say that times five times fast. And I did say that really fast, and it made me draw a bracket instead of a curly brace bracket. There we go. Always curly brace brackets on 
uh, set notation or set builder notation. And then you either put uh, parentheses, bracket, or sometimes curly brace brackets for domain and range as well. Just kind of depends. So that was this worksheet. Again, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, of course, you know, you're welcome to go look at other videos on the channel. You'll see some things popping up around me in different places. It's a, you'll see a playlist for all the videos that in this series on Algebra 1, right? So Algebra 1 worksheets, as well as maybe like a recommended video or just the link to subscribe to my channel and that sort of thing. So go ahead and do that, and I will see you in another video real soon. Blessings.